In the previous video, we mapped out our, our steps for sketching. Uh, so I just posted it here again. And uh, we're going to do another example in which we um, have a function and we use these steps to determine what its graph has to look like. So let's consider the function um, f of x is equal to 2x over x plus 1. And we'll have 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10. So we're going to first compute its first derivative and second derivative. Then we'll find out all our critical values and see where it's increasing and decreasing. Then we'll take all the second derivatives, see where it's 0, finding its, its um, uh, points of inflection. We'll evaluate the function at all the key points and then use all that information to sketch its graph. So first, f prime of x. Well, we've got a quotient here, so we're going to have to use quotient rule. Um, but it's equal to the derivative of the top, so that's 2 times x plus 1 minus the derivative of the bottom, which is uh, a 1, so it's just being minus 2x all over x plus 1 squared. And here's one of those places where it's nice to simplify because I'm going to have a 2x minus a 2x. So this is really just 1, um, uh, or sorry, 2 over x plus 1 squared, or if you will, 2 times x plus 1 to the negative 2. And this is going to be much nicer to take its second derivative. So that's what we need to do in the second spot. We need to figure out what f double prime is. So f double prime of x, we can simply use chain rule here. So the derivative of the power rule, the negative 2 comes down. So I get a negative 4. The derivative of the inside is 1. So that doesn't change anything. And then it's x plus 1 to the minus 3. So there's our first derivative and second derivative. And then uh, we're asked, uh, when does this equal to 0 or doesn't exist? So um, uh, notice this is a fraction. So it's never 0, but it doesn't exist. So f prime does not exist when x is equal to uh, negative 1. Okay, but what's our domain? Our domain is x between 0 and 10. And so there is no place in our domain. This is not in our domain. So there is no critical values. That's fine. Um, how about the second derivative? Well, again, this is the second derivative. And just again, just like the first one, this is never 0, and f double prime doesn't exist when x equals negative 1 again. Again, not in the domain. So um, if we uh, are to do the sine graphs of uh, f prime, so sine graph of f prime, Whoops, not f sub 1, but f prime. Well, it is um, just from 0 to 10. That's our domain. There is no place where it doesn't exist, nowhere where it can change signs. So it doesn't matter. Let's use um, any value you want um, in that interval. Say the value 1. That's going to be our checkpoint. And since if I put 1 into the second derivative, I'm going to get a uh, 2 over 2 squared, or 1 uh, half, uh, which is positive. So that means the graph is positive in the whole interval. Therefore, it is increasing 
over the entire interval. It has to be increasing over the whole interval. Now with regards to the sine graph of f double prime, right? So if I extend this down, I want to know the sine graph of f double prime. And so again, what's our f double prime? It's negative four times x plus one to the negative three. Um, there are no places where in the interval from zero to 10, where uh, the second derivative is zero or doesn't exist. So I'll do the same thing as um, before. I'll take one as my uh, point of inspection. If I put a one in here, I'm gonna get negative four times two to the negative three, which is negative four times one eighth, um, which is a negative one half. So it's negative throughout this interval. So what does that mean about our shape of our graph? That in that whole interval, it's going to have to be some concave down shape. Okay, so that's step two, and this was step three. Let me just make sure we're labeling. Um, this is step three. So then step four, we evaluate it at uh, the key points. Well, there aren't very many key points since it's... Um, we just can look at the endpoints, really. Um, and at the endpoints, we're going to have 0 and 10. If we put 0, so again, let's write down our function. It's 2x over x plus 1. So this is f is 2x over x plus 1. If we put a 0 in here, we get a 0. If we put a 10 in there, we're going to get a 20 over 11. And um, we have enough. We can now sketch this graph. So our domain goes from 0, which is here, to 10. That's our domain. And we see that our min is 0. So at 0, the function is 0. And our max is 20 over um, 11, so that's a little bit smaller than, say, 2. Uh, so um, at 10, it's somewhere around here. And the function has to be increasing, and it's got to be concave down. Now, this is not a spot where the derivative is 0, so it's still increasing after that. So um, I should uh, make that clear that here the graph is increasing and here the graph is still increasing and so when I put this together the graph has to look something like this so it's still increasing still increasing here but it has this concave down shape so this captures everything we know that it's going to be 0 at the point 0. It's going to be 20 over 11 at the point 10. It has to increase over the entire domain because the derivative is positive. It has to have a concave down shape since the second derivative is negative. And so our graph has to look something like this.